All right, everybody. This story is genuinely funny to me. Uh, I've never liked the platform Telegram. When it started getting big, it was one of those platforms that gets advertised as this super hyper private, super, you have total privacy, no one can see your messages or what you post or what you said or whatever, um, like mega privacy app. And I get how there are innocent reasons why someone might be appealed to by that. Someone in my chat mentioned like some activists will use apps like Telegram because it can help them to organize while also avoid potential like legal ramifications for organizing. Um, so I definitely see where the appeal could come from, uh, from an innocent, like more morally upstanding perspective. But for the most part, these types of apps have always come off to me as blatantly trying to bait bad actors onto the sites because most people who are most that are appealed to by this concept of like total privacy it, like i don't know maybe it's just me it, it just it seems weird right it just seems like like what do you have to hide when you're willing to use some weird pl new platform that sells itself on how private everything is you know and naturally my immediate assumption ended up being quite correct Telegram is mainly used by Nazis and a lot of porn creators and porn artists as well. Um, and in many cases, there seems to be grooming and sharing of content that is illegal on there as well. Which is why we have this headline here today. First France and now South Korea. Telegram's legal troubles are only growing and here's why. Following the recent arrest of its founder in France, Telegram is now facing potential legal troubles in South Korea. Mind you, we actually did a segment yesterday on stream about AI pornography or AI revenge porn and how multiple investigations have found that a significant majority of the women who are uh, trained off of, whose likenesses are stolen, I should say, to produce AI pornography, um, are actually uh, Korean women who are not having their, you know, they aren't consenting to these images being made. Um, and on top of that, a lot of them are Korean uh, K-pop artists. And on top of that, the K-pop industry is kind of headlining the war against AI revenge porn. Um, another police investigation has found that at least 60% of AI porn on the internet depicts underage people or was trained off of underage people. 60% minimum. AI porn has been the biggest ref revolutionary development for pe pedophiles on the internet, apparently. Um, and on top of that, it has become sort of a cultural uh, movement as of late in South Korea to fight against this torrent of AI porn due to the almost, not exclusive, but the overwhelming disproportionate targeting of Korean women as the victims of this uh, material. The country's chief police investigator has announced a preliminary investigation into the instant messaging platform's alleged role. Uh, sorry, alleged role. Sorry, alleged role in abetting sex crimes, according to a report from the local Yonhap News Agency. This comes against the backdrop of South Korea's efforts to tackle the spread of deepfake pornography. Oh, they're getting into it in this article, too. That has been targeting young women, including teenagers in the country. Yep, upwards of 60% of the AI porn that um, they the police in uh, Korea found was depicting uh, South Korean teenage girls. Or, like, trained off of them. Um, the probe also poses another major legal challenge to Telegram after its founder and chief executive, Paul Durov, was arrested in France on August 24th for alleged offenses related to the messaging app. Durov, the 39-year-old Russian-born millionaire, hmm, Russian, was arrested by French authorities following a preliminary investigation into Telegram launched on July 8th. Similar to South Korea's investigation, French authorities were probing the platform's role in the distribution of pornographic images of minors, as well as facilitating organized crime, drug trafficking, and fraud. Durov was reportedly accused of failing to mitigate such criminal activities on the platform. Telegram said in a statement posted on social media platform X that it abides by EU laws and that Durov had nothing to hide. I'm sure. We, we investigated ourselves and found no wrong to it. 
According to Yap, Yan Hap's report on Monday, Wu Jong Su's head of the National Office of Investigation drew connections between their case and the one in France and said there were plans to collaborate with their French counterparts and other international institutions. The investigation could be com could be complicated by the fact that Telegram does not readily provide investigation data, such as account information, to any state investigative bodies, including those in the U.S., we reportedly said. Yeah, isn't it weird how this site... Well, like, a site that's gotten big because they won't provide data or evidence for investigations to the police that could be evidence to, like, get it like, a pedophile or something behind bars, like... I get why that might appeal to, say, activists or something, but man, to me, it's just like, who who wants that type of site? Who's attracted to that type of site? What? Okay, bo both my lights are now bugging out and flickering, and I can't get them both to turn off at once, because one turns on when the other turns off, because the way the, uh, the remote works, it's really annoying, but ho hopefully you guys don't mind it too much. Anyway, unfortunately, those bulbs have about burned out. The investigation could be complicated by the fact that, oh yeah, sorry, Telegram's refusal to share information with investigators when required by law has also been noted in the French investigation. Is this just not, like, legal? Have these, like, tech bro, like, tech bros that don't provide this data to the police just been breaking the law the whole time and thinking that it's just fine? They, they can just do that? While well, Durov's arrest has been seen as an unprecedented move, the platform has recently faced legal issues in other countries, such as Brazil and Germany, over concerns surrounding illegal and harmful content. While Telegram has argued that its content moderation practices are within industry standards and constantly improving, certain figures of the platform have made it a particular target of government scrutiny, by only requiring users to provide a phone number to register and offering the ability to hold end-to-end -end encrypted conversations through, a sec through secret chats, through a secret chats feature, the app offers a high degree of anonymity. These anonymous features have long attracted illicit actors, of course they did, such as scammers and extremist groups to the platform, and of course, sex criminals. Now in South Korea, they are attracting distributors of deepfake porn. Deepfakes are videos, sounds, or images of a real person that have been digitally altered and manipulated. They have become increasingly prominent amid the emergence of generative AI technology. South Korean police are probing eight automa automated programs generating deepfake pornography for Telegram groups, along with chat rooms responsible for circulating such content, according to Yon Hap's report. Um, the investigations come amid pressure on authorities to respond to a growing number of reports detailing how Telegram groups, some as large as 200,000, 220,000, oh my god, uh, members, have been used to share sexually exploitative deepfake images of female students from local universities, high schools, and even middle schools. So, very much we're talking about minors. A lot of young men in the country, in fact, have been using these AI programs, supposedly, to um, turn images of their classmates into porn, and then share them around as revenge porn. Um, and in some cases, I'm sure they claim it's real. And, uh, yeah, it can be very harmful. It's become an entire epidemic in South Korea. Um, this is not the first time that Telegram has been at the center of a sex crime scandal in South Korea. In 2020, South Korean authorities arrested a ringleader of an online network that used Telegram to blackmail and coerce women and children into sharing explicit images of themselves. No legal action was taken against Telegram at the time. In response to Durov's arrest, Chris Beer, consumer and tech analyst at GWI, told CNBC's Street Signs Europe that it was unclear how far authorities would be willing to go in regulating and cracking down on Telegram, though, over, though other messaging and social media apps could also come under scrutiny. Beer added there, are, there remains a tension between some consumers' desire to have their freedom of speech protected and also government oversight to shield them from harmful content. Ah, <sighs> so, this whole situation, uh, I find to be the good ending. Uh, I don't like Telegram. I don't like the reputation that Telegram has grown. Who remembers, back when I was like 15, there was this app that was like the original Telegram. It was called Kick, not K-I-C-K, -K, the, um, the like Nazi, no rules, gambling, streaming site, K-I-K. And for some, this app had a reputation for being the app where pedophiles groom kids. 
because for some reason it was almost entirely used by old men and little kids. Oh my god, I was groomed on kick. I have no clue why so many- I'm sorry to say- to, to hear that, but like, I, I'm really sorry. I don't know why there were so many little kids on kick, but it was just full of kids and pedophiles. That was- that was it. That was the entire platform, and it was just like, around for a while. I don't know if it still is, um, but it was just a thing. And that was just- people made jokes about it, people were like, why does this still exist? It, it was a whole thing, right? So, uh, it reminds me a lot of the kick situation. Uh, where, like, that was the site where there were just constant situations of pedophiles grooming kids, and, like, it was just out there. And I don't know if anything was ever done about it, per se, or if the site just kind of fizzled out on its own. Um, yeah, kind of hard to nail down a, uh, anything to figure that out, right? I thought Kick was a sex app for a long time. I don't blame you. I really don't blame you for that. That's a completely reasonable assumption based on the stuff that you would have heard and seen about that app. A completely reasonable uh, assumption. Um, I do remember that. Yeah, so do I. I was like 16 or 15 at the time. I was just a, just a young lad when this was a big thing, so yeah. It's still a thing, but it turned into a streaming website now. Huh. Cool. Um, well, I hope the site gets nuked off the face of the internet, because I don't like the shit that's happening there. I only ever saw it brought up in Reddit videos by Creepers. Yeah. Yeah, Kick is a, uh... It's a, it's a, um, it's a bit of a, uh, a deep cut, to be sure, but it reminds me a lot of Telegram, and I feel like Telegram has kind of evolved into the modern-day kick, if that makes sense. So, glad so many of you guys remember what I'm talking about, but for those that don't, that's what it was. I'm really happy that there's actually a good ending at the end of all this, that there are some, na like, na national governments that are taking action against these tech bros that think they can just use their money, power, and fame, and fortune that they've built up by creating tech companies and actually pursuing them with legal action. Like, these people act like they're completely untouchable, and they can do stuff like turn down the White House requests to remove illegal content off their platforms, or turn down the White House requests to uh, suppress misinformation that is being, per like, pr pushed around on the platform. Um, they act as though, uh, you know, th this is some massive attack on them, uh, and that they have every right in the world to allow this kind of stuff and to profit off of it, um, and they bitch when this stuff happens, but I'm so glad they're actually, like, karma's catching up to them, you know? Like, there are actual legal consequences of this stuff. I'd be curious to see if, like, some foreign governments start trying to maybe tr press charges on Zuckerberg or Elon Musk for allowing so much misinformation to spread and, like, be a thing on Twitter and Facebook. That wouldn't surprise me. I know Brazil, um, before they even banned uh, Twitter, they were going after Elon Musk. And uh, they were going after uh, Twitter with, like, uh, fines. Like, charges and fines. And they wouldn't pay. Elon wouldn't pay. And so their response was just to say, okay, we're just going to ban uh, Twitter in the country. You know? That, that was, they had to eventually drop the anvil of leverage there of like, okay, if you're not going to follow our nation's law, then I guess we'll have to follow through on the implication that if you don't follow our nation's law, then your business won't be allowed to run there at the very least, right? Giga-based Brazil. I mean, yeah, I would, I'm inclined to agree for sure. Um, I can understand why so many Brazilians are upset about it, but they are, they are indeed crying censorship. Yeah, there are, there are like riots and protests in Brazil over that Twitter banning, yeah. I remember using Kick when I was a teen to message friends after school. I didn't think it was that bad, but I was naive back then. Like, I, I still haven't gotten an answer on why so many kids back then used this random, like, app called Kick. I never used it, and I, I guess I was just too old to find it interesting. Maybe some of you guys in chat are, are were, like, younger than me back then. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. Regardless, though, I'm just glad to see that we're, we're, we're getting a good ending to the story of Telegram. Its CEO is being arrested and charged in France, which is hilarious. Who who would have thought, just out of left field, the French end up being the good guys in this story? Would have never predicted that. Not in a million years. Not in a million years. Anyway, 
If you guys enjoyed this video, learned anything, found yourself entertained at all by this segment, please consider leaving a like. Every thumbs up you drop on the channel on my videos, no matter when, where, or what you're watching, goes a long way to help the channel. I really do mean it. Um, basically twists YouTube's arm into pushing my content out to more people, people who haven't seen my content before, so it grows the channel a ton, and it means a lot. Of course, consider commenting down below. It helps and uh, kind of compounds on that effect that I mentioned before with the likes. And you can also subscribe and ring the bell icon to turn on all notifications so that YouTube actually tells you when I go live or upload a new video. Don't forget, of course, you can also join my fan discord down below in the description. There's a link to join. It's totally free. And I also host game events, watch parties and call in streams there almost every week. And I announce all my new uploads and streams there as well. So whenever I go live or put anything new out, you guys don't have to worry about missing it because at least you'll get notified there. Anyway, though. Uh, you can also, if you want to, you know, help me keep the lights on and help keep this stream running and you want to support me financially and you can afford it, you can consider donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, or buying some merch to the Streamlabs link down below. But regardless of how you support me, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you again.